Hi, you guys. So we got the wood stove here, and I'm removing the ash in here a little bit at a time, putting it in this bucket. This is not how you should do this. I really should be using that metal bucket, which is full of kindling. So I'm using this plastic bucket. Um, the fire, the last fire I made was two, or di the day before yesterday. So this should be okay, but I'm not, if I was storing the ash, I wouldn't use a plastic bucket. But what I'm doing is um, taking it out of here and we're going to go directly out into the garden and use this ash. So while you're cleaning your fireplace, let's not neglect your garden. Now just don't go put ash out there without checking the pH of your soil. A lot of people recommend, oh, just take your ash and throw it on your garden. Um, but what if that is detrimental? So there are places where you want to put ash, and there are places where you don't want to put ash. Let's talk about it. All right, so I have most of the ash out of there. But always leave some ash inside your fireplace or your wood stove. I can't remember the science behind it. Um, but if you remove it all, your next fires are going to be kind of hard to light for some reason. I don't remember why. If I remember between now and the time the video is published, I'll put it down here. But it is important to leave some ash in the wood stove or the fireplace. Um... Yeah, so anyway, I'm going to light a fire to get the house warm, and then we're going to go outside. So I'm going around my yard with my little pH meter, and I'm making notes of the pH level. So I can see, do I need to add wood ash? Do I not need to add wood ash? These are my blueberries, and my pH meter was reading 7 before I just picked it up. So I'm messing with the results there. Blueberries like acidic soil. Um, it's actually just over seven, which means uh, this is too alkaline right now. Uh, it's too basic, it's too sweet. You know, you've heard the old timers say, let's sweeten the soil, and they go throw a bunch of lime over it. Uh, throwing wood ash is a, a rough equivalent of that. It gives a bunch of micronutrients too, which I'll list for you, but blueberries want a more acidic soil. So if I add that wood ash that my friends are telling me, I'll just go throw it on your garden, it's going to bring that up higher. And what's that going to do to my blueberry crop? It's going to tank. So I actually need to acidify my soil here. I'm going to call that a good seven. I'm going to write that down. Seven. My raised beds are between six and 6.5. Um, anything that's about six, I'm going to put a little wood ash. If it's 6.5 to seven, I'm going to leave it. If it's too high or too low, I'll adjust it. And I wanted to show you that because with all good intentions, people will tell you, well, just go ahead and throw that wood ash around. That is not what you want to do. So let's go over here for a second. I'm on the raised beds. i got to check this bed. It's got my garlic, or actually some returning garlic in it. Put that in. I'm going to leave that. I actually have the insert from this machine. I had one for a long time, the same machine. It doesn't run on batteries. I think it runs on, I don't know, uh, good thoughts and charm. I have no idea what it runs on, but it works. And I, I test it with vinegar and um, acid, acid and base items just to make sure that it does baking soda and vinegar. Okay. That's a different story. So the old insert pH meter, look at that. So we've got a list here for you. All right. So acid lovers. So things that want a low pH right? Heathers, roadies, azaleas, camellias, potatoes, tomatoes, strawberries, and uh, lots of berries. So what wants the wood 
ash. What wants to be up in the alkaline, the basic, the base? Forsythia, chrysanthemum, delphinum, delphinium, delphinium, firethorn, I don't even know about the firethorn, I don't know what that is. Brussels sprouts, cabbages, onions, oh, we grow a lot of that stuff, right? Cauliflower. So the areas where I grow these, I really need to check and make sure that they are alkaline enough. And if they're not, that's what I'm going to add. My wood ash, not just everywhere, you just don't go throwing it around. So that means to the big garden we go, all right? After this is done, I think it is 6.5. So most of the beds are 6.5, and that's fine with me. The six bed, which is this one, I'm going to put a little ash just over the top of it, and then I'll finish checking the other beds, but you don't need to watch that. Let's go to the big garden. All right, so on the way, we're going to talk about Sarah, because she's so pretty. Look at her. She's so proud. Uh, so you don't go throwing your ash everywhere, right? Keep your ash in your pants until you need it. We're going to go check. So it looks like the brassicas, right? Stuff that uh, makes your breath bad and has high uh, superfoods. I was going to say high iron, start naming off all the stuff it has. Swiss chard is going to be in that boat. These onions, remember that onion row we have here? We've got another one with midway. We grow lots of stuff in this field, but I want to make sure that it's neutral to high acid. And um, because I kind of know where I'm going to plant things next year, I might just dribble along some ash, depending on our results. So we're just going to walk into here. Why are we walking here? Because I have onions here that are coming up from last year and it's in the middle of the field. All right. So in we go with the meter. Put that on there and we're going to wait. So the insert says this thing is instantaneous, but what I've noticed when I plug it into the ground is it does move for a little bit. So we look like we're at a good solid 6.5, which is um, a little acidic for the perfect um, onion area. However, for most veg, it's perfect, right? 6.5 is right between 6 and 6.9. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. You know, you guys, I use that, this deep mulch, this the wood chip method because I create my own dirt. You wouldn't believe how many people have told me that I'm going to ruin my yard, I'm going to ruin my soil, I'm going to have too much nitrogen, the pH is going to be all off, you know. Does that look like the pH is off? Proof's in the pudding, right? All right. So what else do I have in the big garden? Not much. Um, but I do have all these hydrangeas. I think hydrangeas like to be alkaline. I'm going to double check that, but this whole pia, row is hydrangeas. Isn't that gorgeous? You know what I do to care for these? How much time it takes? Every, none. <laughs> Once I deadheaded them. Otherwise I just leave them be. I mean, look at this. They're dying off already, but I will tell you, see these are kind of that pink. When they were alive, they were kind of a pinky purple. But if you do add metal to the bottom, you can change the color of your hydrangeas. I think these are a mountain hydrangea. I don't know for sure. I don't really like them. Um, I think they're gorgeous. They take care of themselves. It's quite spectacular when they're all in bloom over here. But I know I'm supposed to deadhead them to come through. I, I did that one year. It took like a full day. And I didn't see any growth difference. So basically, I come through with a hedge trimmer, trim them down, whoosh, trim them off the top. And that's it. All right, so what did we learn today? We learned don't go throwing your ash around. There's a song that reminds me of, to think about what that is. Check your pH levels before you do. Um, if your berries are high, Alkaline, gonna need to lower that. So I'm either going to need to get a specific agent to lower the pH 
or I can do something like, you know, add coffee grounds. That takes years and years to really get in there and change. I've got some onions growing in here, so just for fun. Let's uh, check the pH in here because I did really well. Let's see what it is for fun. Laughs and giggles. Um, so what I will probably need to do then is actually buy something. Um, I'll go ahead and start collecting my coffee grounds to put on there. I mean, why not, right? They're going on the compost anyway. I might as well compost them directly into the bottom of the berries. I also have marion berries. I'll go check those. Um, so be careful with your ash. Just don't go threading it around. You know, just take take a look. This meter, there's lots and lots of different kinds of meters. This particular meter we got at a garage sale, I think for a dollar. The one before that came with this house. Um, they're on Amazon. I think they're like 12 bucks or something. And again, there's no batteries in here. It doesn't, I don't know how it works. Magnetic forces of the world. Like I said, I think it's probably my charm that keeps it charged. <laughs> anyway, I have no idea. I'll try to find out. All right, so here we're at six and a quarter. Hmm. Onions are liking it though. So much for that. I don't know. I don't know. I'll add some ash in here. Maybe they sucked up all the all the good pH. Okay, let me know if you have any questions. I'll try to answer them. I'm not a scientist, but I play one on TV. Alright, you guys. Take it easy. Don't put ash everywhere. And, uh, yeah. Get a pH meter. It's a good thing. Bye. Say bye, Sarah. Bye, Sarah. All right, so, you know, I was kind of funnily saying, I wonder if, funnily, saying if uh, the areas that were low in alkalinity right now was because of what I produced, sucking it up. It's, it's exactly what happened, I'm sure. If something needs to be alkaline and suddenly it's more acidic, of course, it needs to be adjusted, and that's probably because the prior crop used the micronutrients it needed. So I'm over in one of my other beds. It's over seven. I'm going to leave this one alone. But what I did do is a light coating of ash on top of this bed that was measuring 6.0 because I wanted to bring it up a bit. Let me show you uh, how I do this. And actually, let's go to where the onions are because I think um, it'll be good to see it not over ash, but actually live in action. Okay, so this is the big garden again, and I've got onions there. Um, I planted tomatoes, tomatillos in here. I've got that section of onion right here, so I'm going to move over more because this is the area where I'm going to have potatoes and the brassicas that take more of um, that alkaline soil. So I'm across from my pump house. I'm going to use the door there and kind of go this way. Uh, wind is blowing this way, so I should probably slip down here more. And I love putting those little posts. See those posts in the corner there? I've got them every so often, so I use those as, as markers. All right, I'm literally, you should have a glove on. I know, I know. But again, the wind is blowing from this way to this way. And all I'm going to do is broadcast it. Walk and broadcast. So you can see there's a light coating at the top. And then I'll come out and check it in a few more weeks after we've had some rains. I'll probably have more wood ash by then. And I can put it down and continue until it gets to be where I want it to be. Right? Make sense? All right, let me know if you guys have any questions. See you later.